Hey. Hi, George. Welcome. Thank you. How you going? It's it's all good. It's uh, getting warmer over here in Prague. How's uh, how's Australia doing? It's finally starting to get colder, thankfully. <laughs> uh, perfectly aligned, inverted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When when is your summer? Well, it's now the the cherry blossoms are starting to blossom uh, a little bit, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's usually around like June. Yeah, I would say that June is what I could consider summer here. Yeah, yeah, definitely inverted then. Yeah, is it snowing in winter? Uh, not not where I am. No, I'm in Queensland, so it's mostly just hot most of the time. Right, I don't the know. South, there's some snow, but yeah. Hey, hello. Hey. <clears throat> All right. Um, I don't know if uh, anybody else is joining. We'll see. But uh, I think we can start in the meantime. And uh, let me share my screen. So the ag agenda is not very heavy today. It's a pretty lightweight. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so, but yeah, we should probably start with that following the antitrust policy from Hyperledger. So I'll just uh, leave this uh, leave this screen for a while. In the meantime, uh, welcome everyone on uh, on another Aries VCX community call. It's 23rd of March, 2023. And this is our antitrust policy notice. All right, so let's jump into our agenda. So uh, as the last time I mentioned, I, I, I swapped the discussions from the end to the beginning and I, I kept it uh, that way again. I think it's kind of better to discuss uh, unusual stuff or like some novelties in the beginning rather than let everybody wait until the end. if. Uh, there might be a new joiners who just are interested in some like uh, announcements. So starting with that, um, yeah, just a quick update on the mentorship program. So we have our two uh, mentorship projects pending right now. Uh, so two projects submitted, one is for UniFi mobile wrapper, another one is for implementing Aries Mediator on top of Aries VCX. Um, we do have one uh, person who is already interested in in uh, picking some of these uh, projects up. However, the the timelines for the the mentorship program is the the TOC. Uh, I think that's technical uh, technical something committee uh, of high pleasure uh, is uh, has time to approve it until the. Um, uh, till the end of this month and then i believe 5th of april begins the applications for mentees so i i know for sure we have one uh, we'll see if there will be more people who will join or how it's gonna go um yeah but in the meantime um in the meantime uh just a small bit on a other way to join um and participate in in our community uh, is to picking up some of the good first issues uh, which has been created uh, recently on GitHub. Uh, it was uh, we we mentioned we touched on this last week, and so this is small small update here that uh, it's actually catching up catching on pretty well, and we have two new uh, brand new contributors uh, who submitted pull requests. All of these pull requests, pull requests are still in progress. 
nevertheless i think it's pretty cool to to see uh you know new, new activity new people uh picking up some some issues and yeah just i guess uh, this is like a good signal for us that this is actually like a good approach to get some uh, helping hands and just do a bit of a uh, public good to educate like uh, help people get into rust get them into aries and uh you know possibly a uh, possibly raise a valuable uh contributor long-term contributor for our community as well <clears throat> so there's a few which i've created before and uh, again i would like to encourage you guys uh to or anyone uh to create these good first issues and time you you know find something reasonably something of a reasonable scope which uh, could be picked up by a beginner uh, assuming that uh you know it's like reasonably explained so um i think the the more detail more detailed description of the issue you are willing to provide the better for these uh the better for these newcomers um and yeah so just just a note about that uh any any feedbacks on uh, this first two points guys uh about the for github issues or about the mentorship program well that seems like no so that's all good uh we move on um by the way right um yeah and then i just wanted to um uh, touch on the, the paralyzation of maybe just like something to keep in mind uh i, I was just thinking uh you know, currently we have this like big pr from from bogdan going on and uh and obviously like so sometimes it's uh, difficult to like paralyze and it's it's easy it's it's just like uh feels risky to start a new work when there's something big going on so so i just like would like to i don't know suggest or yeah keep in mind like going forward uh just to think about like how can we you know make progress but at the same time like enable make, make sure to enable parallelization so for example since, since you guys um both Bogdan and, and George are on call um I'll just like uh, talk directly about uh, like uh, to you so I was just thinking like going forward right we'll finish now the messages create and then then there'll be the pending work will be to to integrate it in the like rest of the code base so my suggestion here would be like we, i think we can do it like piece by piece so uh so we don't have to work in kind of a like waterfall mode that uh, that one person like take like you know does it all but i guess like uh, we could just start integrating this new message oh actually i mean i'm not sure if it's really possible but uh but if it's possible i think we should at least we should try to try to like integrate it maybe piece by piece so that like you know, maybe one person can integrate the new messages into one protocol another person can put it into another protocol um and and probably like also the the state pattern refactoring can be happening at the same time i know i mean it might be it might be riskier maybe it requires more coordination but at the same time it it seems like a, a it seems pity when uh, when um there's no like uh, multiple streams uh i guess of of work going in what while i know that uh you know both of you guys are uh you know very very capable so i don't know what's your guys uh thoughts on this um i had some thoughts about this before and in fact discussed it with mira i think that we could probably achieve that if um 
we implement some conversions between the old message types and the new message types. Um, so that, for instance, let's take George's example and work on the handler, not the handler, the holder uh, stay machine. So if, if he continues to work with that, and let's say and we, we merge today the messages crate, uh, and he picks it up and starts using the new messages, then we kind of have to keep in check the fact that this will be using new messages and the others will be using old messages. But as long as there are these conversions in place, I think it should be all right. So that would technically allow us to like do multiple things at once and not, uh, you know, without too much hassle, I think. Mm. I guess, yeah, as far as it's, it, well, in terms of this particle, like uh, uh, matter, the messages stuff, like, I guess if, if the messages like not leaking, if there's not like no conflicts, like if these two crates, two, two messages crates are not both leaking out of Aries VCX, and they're just kind of, you know, encapsulated within Aries VCX, and there's, you know, two versions of the messages uh, used. Um, that should be probably fine, but maybe it might be problematic if there's some some APIs which, for example, are currently returning, you know, Aries uh, like Aries message. Uh, of the old crate, and then there will be like similar API, but returning uh, the the uh, the structs of the new crate might be a little bit messy. But um... yeah, I mean there probably are instances in the other crates, the agency client, the agent implementation, maybe even libvcx. Uh, I don't know about the UniFFI wrapper, but there hmm. probably are some instances. I I can't tell for sure. But ideally, um, like having the conversion in place, I think it could just be, um, yeah, I mean, it would have to be at a message level, not just the, the big enum containing all the possible variants. But um, I, ideally, I think it can be just like a, another line added just for converting the message. You know, when let's say you pass, a, I know some sort of request message, and then you just do a from the old, the new one from the old one. It could, it should technically work. I, I think. So, so it will require some work, but I don't know if it will be that big of a hassle. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, are you talking about sort of like a public transformer for turning the old messages into new ones? Because yeah, like, just implementing. Uh, just implementing from the from trait. Yeah. Uh, I would do that in the old messages crate. So then when we get rid of it, we get rid of the of these things as well. Um, and basically just implement from an old message to the new one. And then whenever you need to transition, you can, uh, we could do it back and forth, I guess. We could do it both ways. I don't know if it would make sense, but we can. Yeah, I, I mean, Theoretically, right, if someone is serializing and, and storing uh, an old message, it should be able to, uh, well, I guess, serialize back into the new form of it, right? Because it's just a yeah. good structure. Yeah, so, right, right. The, the, the data structures changed in, in terms of how Rust sees them, but serialization yes, right. and deserialization, I think, I mean, I, I don't think, ideally, they should be the same. Um, yeah. Maybe, I don't know. There were some things added that were missing. One example that comes to mind is the received orders from the thread decorator. Uh, but that's basically optional. So if it's missing, it's just not going to have it. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't think there would be problems in terms of that. Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's my idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of hopeful the migration for external consumers from the old messages to new ones won't be too much of a big deal because uh, I, I guess, like I said, the thing that comes over the wire is still that JSON string payload. And now you're just, uh, I guess, serializing it into the, the new message rather than the old one. Um, Alternatively, 
if that's an issue, we could probably like duplicate the state machines and when they're all implemented, just remove mm -hmm. the old ones. But that might get, um, I don't know, it might get to be quite a, quite a lot of, let's say, re I don't know, redundant old code, legacy code. I don't know. Mm. I think I think it shouldn't be. Uh, I, I think we can. I can. I think in this case we can uh, make it without uh, duplication. Is there, it's not really functional changes, just like maybe dealing with a little bit different API, right? Of the yeah. Of the... I mean, ultimately, um, I think we discussed about this, Patrick, at some point, and there are these tags, right, in the in the repo, so. I mean, people can just pull the code from an old tag, old, I don't know, the current oh, yeah. tag, whatever the tag is, and just stick to that. And then when the new release is made, and let's say we replaced all the state machines and whatnot, then there would be a new tag and they can start using that one. So, like, if, if you just consider that, then they wouldn't even have to do any sort of, I don't know, transformation gymnastics. They would just have to pull the the code from that particular commit so hmm. yeah I, I mean personally um uh, just in my use case as a consumer of vcx mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think it's going to be a huge deal migrating to the new messages um at least in my situation um but just... I, I did think the type state introducing the type state patterns is going to be the right time to start using the new messages for sure mm -hmm. mm. yeah um i guess it's just about it, it would be it would be kind of weird to have the two messages and keeping track of where you need to convert in between i mean yeah. if someone wants to do that they definitely could and we can provide that um and we probably could use that, you know, as we're developing, uh, so that we can work with these state machines independently. Um, but from like from a consumer point of view, I would just stick to the old, uh, or whatever current state is, and then when everything is done, um, keep start using the new release. Then I wouldn't personally, I don't know, transition to having. You know, Half of the state machines in one way, and the other, the others in one way, and some of them using some message crate, and the others using a different message crate. Mm. But technically, they can. I don't know. I, it just feels more cumbersome to me. I I think like uh, the message uh, message uh, conversion or like integration probably that should be done at least like. Like within one release, yeah. Like I would agree that maybe maybe the work itself, if it's possible, would be good if it can be parallelized. Like maybe two people, you know, one can help out the other to actually finish this work. Uh, but then, but then the 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 my, I, I think like zero fifty four really should not have the old messages create anymore. But uh, and then we can, uh, I don't know, and then independently of that we can i think start uh implementing the type state pattern like piece by piece even in 054 we might include you know already the type type state uh and not holder or something like that but uh, the yeah, completely that's a, that's a good idea actually i don't know why i disregarded uh we could technically just integrate and deprecate the old messages create sooner uh, and for instance like george could start using it it's not yet Mars, but hopefully soon enough, uh, we're getting there. But um, like George could start using it in the holder that he's working on, and maybe I could start integrating it into the old state machines. Um, basically, it would be like a, I don't know, sort of dummy, or not dummy, but kind of silly integration, like just replacing the messages as they were with the new ones. Uh, no you know, fancy decomposition or treating threads in some whatever way. Yeah, yeah. So, and I, I think that's also like the goal for using the type state pattern, the state machines. I don't think we should focus on like optimizing 
or just abstracting away the message processing, that's probably a completely different beast, like handling all the threads in a uniform way or, and whatnot. Mm. That, we, that we could probably do later on uh, because it, it, we would end up in the same spot where it would be too much to handle, I guess. So um, just to be clear, uh, so we're talking about by 0.54, uh, replacing messages entirely in Aries VCX, the crate. That's my suggestion. That uh, throughout the until the next release, we can kind of uh, you know start replacing it iteratively. But zero fifty four should not have the old messages anymore at all. Just delete the entire crate. Yeah, yep. fair enough. Nice. Yeah. yeah, and then and then since it would be used everywhere, the the state machines and refactors would be more consistent, I guess. Mm. And it would avoid all these uh, weird conversions. Mm. It's probably it's probably the way to go. Yeah. All right, then. Shall we move on? In the agenda? Yep. Okay, fine by me. All right. Um, so yeah, the overview of recent work done. So those are uh, not man much stuff happening, but uh, nevertheless, there was two PRs from myself. Um, I think I covered it already. Uh, well, I actually have a wrong link here. Um, that was two PRs from me. Oh, yeah, and uh, I we we covered it already in a previous week. So that was like. First, it was the first round of changes was adding some some method get revocation status, then the next round of changes was actually <laughs> removing or kind of renaming that method, uh, and it's described here extensively. So this is pretty much the the, the only I think yeah significant change recently. This is actually changing the API, so it's breaking change, but only for the, the proof verifiers in terms of the API and also, also some serialization, deserialization uh, impact consequences uh, with uh, provided migration strategy. Um, and I think we'll be, uh, just to touch down on this a little bit, I think this is something uh, we'll be doing um, a lot, uh, maybe possibly a lot in uh, like upcoming releases with the changes we are planning for the state pattern. So <clears throat> well, I guess we'll always have like two choices, either just kind of start from scratch and just say like, oh, this is new proof implementation, like let's say this is new, uh, like a holder implementation using state pattern, it's it's completely different, and it doesn't, you know, there's no migration path to the old ones, and here's just new set of APIs, or the alternatively, uh, we can do migration like this, where you basically re-serialize the old uh, instance, and you deserialize it, and then serialize it into a new format, a new uh, uh you 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 go on with your life right so <clears throat> uh this is the first time i think we we actually do something like this this kind of uh, backwards compatibility migration support but i think we'll 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 be running into this kind of stuff uh possibly a bit in the upcoming future Uh, next up, well, that was a release a 053. Uh, that was after a while since the previous release, I believe that was um, that was a month ago. So releases um, 10 hours ago, 053. And 052 was, yeah, it was last month. And as for the changes, uh, yeah, I, I can't uh, conclude the changes in 0.53 right at this call because our job generating change log is a bit broken. Apparently, it somehow doesn't pick up the changes from the 0.50 between 0.52 and 
it, instead it 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 includes all kinds of all changes which shouldn't be here. So I should uh, we should create an issue to fix this uh, change log job, which is being um, auto generated from PRs. Um, so sorry about that. Um, I'll 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 go ahead and uh, update this uh, change log manually for the 053 version after the call. Uh, next, to check on our progress, as I mentioned before, uh, we had uh, kind of good initial success with a good first issue stuff. Uh, so we had uh, Stevane as a first uh, contributor, a first time contributor, uh, picking up um, one of the issues to uh, to refactor encode attributes. Uh, it's in progress and <clears throat> we are having a bunch of discussion here. So feel free to hop in and share your ideas if you have some about this, your thoughts. Uh, next, we had also Andy Bain picking up uh, one of the good first issues, uh, but Andy ran into some uh, problems just setting up the repo and running the test, stuff like that. So he'll need to fight through that. Uh, Nevertheless, uh, yeah, these are kind of uh, initial state, but I wanted to give honorable mentions to our first, 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 uh, first time contributors. Uh, and next up, moving to the messages to create, we 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 discussed a bit already. Uh, I assume I I believe it's uh, nearing completion uh, day by day, almost there. I left my review recently. Um, and, um, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll leave a word to, to Bogdan as the owner of this PR, if you have anything to share or any update, whatever is on your mind. Yeah, sure. Um, so thanks for the, for the review, first of all, uh, really thorough. I appreciate it. Um, I already addressed a lot of the points you, you had um maybe and by the way i had to like I, I removed that um formatting those formatting options it was indeed quite a bad call to introduce them now we can do it after um and i basically had to um sort of cherry pick the the commits and put them back and as they were and, and all that and i rebased based uh, back on main um because it was uh, some things were merged in the meantime so right now the PR or the brand should be up to date. Uh, but because of that, some of the conversations you, you had on the in the review, uh, you know, some of these threads are kind of missing. Mm -hmm. um, as they point to some uh, obsolete commit because I had to to push to force push the, the changes. Uh, but yeah, now there are less way less files changed. You can already see it's 75. They used to be like 480 something because the, the formatting options went through all the files in the workspace. Um, so I reverted that. Maybe something uh, I don't know, worthy of addressing is the timing decorator. Um, very good catch there. I forgot about reading, treating that uh, as it should be. So that's been handled. Um, there were some testing suggestions which uh, have been which have been impl I've implemented. Um, yeah, I don't know what what else was there. Um, let me try and uh, pull up the PR myself. Let's see. But yeah, overall. Um, so things are moving. Uh, we're almost there. It was just a matter of documenting and testing stuff and kind of settling on some namings. Um, right now, pretty much, I think the only thing remaining to document are like the messages, modules, maybe adding the, like you suggested, I also had an item in the list, like adding the RFC related to a protocol in the mm. modules. So it would be easy to track what these messages are. Um, and yeah, some testing, like kind of related to what we were discussing earlier, but testing some of the, like testing some, some serialization equality between the old crates and the new crates. Uh, 
the, the new old, mes old messages and new messages, sorry. But yeah, the old crate and the new crate, um, kind of to you know make sure that um, these things are as they are supposed to be. Um, and maybe at some at the same time, maybe once one uh, one idea here, maybe like right. if, we, if we try to like compare uh, those two crates. Uh, although it's probably was suggested originally by me, now I'm not sure if it's like like good like necessarily the most efficient approach. Like uh, maybe what we can do is like you know within this release, like just try to integrate it into the RZ6 without mm. without doing like preliminary check if we like building the you know serialized exact same messages. Uh, okay. But instead, just kind of you know try make it work and then. We can uh, we can just plug that new version into the uh, Aries um, you know um, Aries agent test harness mm -hmm. and you know, see if we still have the same interop with other implementations and if Fair we enough. see you know a significant drop then yeah probably we have like some we introduce some issue then we can start to investigate but uh, I guess uh, th checking those serialization between those two crates ahead of time like. Would be the kind of code we delete after all anyway since we'll be deleting the original yeah, okay. yeah that's true um okay then I'll, uh, I'll remove the item from the list or strike it through um but yeah so essentially it's just some some renaming and some that documentation at the module level um and maybe just exposing some some types through some re-exports but that's pretty much it and i would actually like i'm, I'm more than open to ideas in terms of naming stuff so the two main things are, um, you can scroll down a bit. It's under the renames section. Those two, no, 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 uh, yeah, in the list, yeah. So these two things, you also mentioned them in your, in your review. I also had that in mind. So basically just naming those two to something. I would, it would be really, really nice, I think, to have sort of like, a, like the same name, uh, basically just representing the, the implementation of the, because these, uh, directories basically hold the these two modules hold the actual implementations of either the protocols like the, the contents and decorators or um, you know the message type like the protocol we use for deserializing the message type and protocol mm. registry and that so it's not necessary I don't know just just figuring out some some decent name for them um, and then there's also um, I, I think it would be also nice to try to avoid collisions between um, like that the protocol names and the message name, you know, because you would have this, um, like the message type would be, I don't know, let's say uh, connection and then connection V1 and connection V1 point underscore O and so on. And ultimately the protocol message itself would kind of follow the same convention, which might be okay, but maybe having something to uh, sort of distinguish between them and avoid collisions if you have to import both of them, that would be nice. Um, I just don't know, nothing comes at the top of my head, but feel free to, uh, you know, to suggest something. But I guess those are the, I you know, critical things. <laughs> Uh, not necessarily critical, but the the things I just can't can't really figure out. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm basically going to take care of the of the documentation uh, today, the rest of the stuff, um, and re-exports. And yeah, it'll just be these renames. And then from my point of view, uh, this can be merged, mm -hmm. but provided that you you guys don't uh, I don't have anything else um, to note from from your reviews. Yeah, um, I'll I'll have a review soon. Uh, I was sort of waiting till it was right near the end, and it sounds like we're there. Yeah, fair enough. It's uh, it's definitely better documented now. Probably still uh, still lacks some stuff here and there. I, I hope not that much, but uh, at least in terms of the more intense stuff, uh, mm. I think I, I I tried to document it. Uh, let me know if it's not well enough, and we can adjust or. You know.
Yeah, great. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, so I guess let's let's move on, and that brings us, I think, pretty much to the end of our call, possibly. So upcoming quirk item here is just copy pasted from the last week. So basically, and we're still on track with this one, and then we already. Uh, integrated, like discussed this stuff all extensively within the when we talk about the parallelization, pretty much uh, like how are we gonna do all this work in efficient manner, the most efficient manner manner where we can parallelize. So I guess this is gonna be like now like uh, soon finished. I'm done by Bogdan, and then then in a zero we have recently had 053 release and in 054 release we'll have fully integrated the new crate into Aries VCX we'll delete uh, the old crate and uh, if uh, if our if our capacities allow maybe we'll actually uh, like finish some of this uh, some of this uh, New implement type state type state implementations, but uh, that's pretty much I think independent of these. Uh, this can be, some of these can be done zero fifty four, and the rest of it the rest of it can be done uh, later on. And yeah, I guess then uh, let's see maybe zero fifty five and 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 on. Uh, some of these other items can start to be addressed maybe also in in parallel with the type state uh, migration mm, yeah and that's our last point and meeting discussions do you uh, does anyone has uh, anything else uh, you would like to mention or discuss yeah um, on the on the VDR tool stuff um, I had that PI in draft a little while ago um, where I was putting VDR tools behind a feature flag um, and then I sort of got lazy with it and should come back to it um, mm -hmm. but yeah yeah I, I'll, I'll try I'll try to finish this up soon um, I was going to ask as well if if you think it'd be a good idea to also put like the I guess the shared modular dependencies behind a flag as well so then you can sort of switch between them. Um, so like Credex and Indie VDR. Uh, right, Credex, Indie VDR. Well, I, I, first I, I saw that it's actually passing. So I guess it, this is like close to completion, I suppose, right? Because um, the CI works. Maybe the, uh, just yeah. to be clear, like the state is like what what is actually missing right now other than the the suggestion for adding the additional feature um it, it's just there's a small test that uh doesn't go well because it uses like an old uh libindy mock concept um which oh. in my opinion right. should probably be swapped out for like a more general mocking yeah concept. yeah yeah for sure that sounds fair um, but uh, that's it really. Like I, I've been using uh, this privately and it, it mm -hmm. sort of works as expected where you can have Aries VCX imported uh, along with something like Aries Ascar and then you don't get all the dependency conflicts. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, there is still the dependency conflicts that we will need to fix up eventually. Um, but it, it works as expected, I guess, yeah. Right, and with your uh, to 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 your suggestion, uh, so you're saying that okay, uh, this feature this feature flag here is to hide VDR tools yeah, behind a feature flag. So if you are using this flag, right, uh, VDR tools, then the VDR, lib VDR tools become optional, and so in case you are using the the kind of uh, those profiles, those implementations, mm. which are using the modular stuff. Like you don't, you simply don't need this, right? Because you have a, uh, you have, 
yeah yeah exactly you have all the other you, you need um so but, uh, how do you go about if you use if, if you enable this right now then how do you go about the wallet are you using ascar uh like privately yeah privately i've been playing with ascar and also just mocks of it just to test that it's working correctly um, right and, and and so if you if you do this feature flag uh, then you don't have those dependency conflicts we've been running into i suppose right yeah exactly and it, it cuts down your number of dependencies like mm. uh, significantly by hundreds i see mm. yeah vdr tools has like says the the tree is really uh like long and quite deep yeah i think it's like 500 lines of like dependencies when you print out the entire tree or maybe 600 it's quite deep yeah yeah exactly like uh, realistically uh while we're in this transition period of video tools to the shared stuff um uh, consumers are only really gonna want to pick one of them either video yeah. tools or the shared dependencies they probably won't be in a state where they need both uh maybe while they're migrating but that's pretty much it hmm. and so um, what's the suggestion the additional suggestion you know the next feature flag you are saying um uh, so like the alternative dependencies to vdr tools are at the moment indie vdr uh indie credx and in the future aries ascar so mm -hmm. they could also be uh optional dependencies that are put behind a feature flag uh, oh, similar right. to how VDR tools is like you see there or if, if, we you're decide using, that, if you're using VDR tools then you don't need in the credits right or like the the, the the modular ones yeah exactly yeah right yeah that, that would be nice I think you know uh, we, it, we are in position where we could actually use it so it, it, it would be nice it would cut down our uh dependency uh if, like effective dependency uh at least in the in our binary so that will be definitely like nice to have feature yeah yeah exactly um consumers such as yourself and that's that's why i've put uh vdr tools as the default feature flag there um mm -hmm. so you wouldn't need to change anything when importing aries vcx if, if this pr goes through um so yeah right awesome awesome that sounds good let's do it Yes, need to stop being lazy and finish it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling, <laughs> the situation. All right, anything else? Any other points? Maybe just uh, what we discussed about the um, the state machine states about like sending a message and receiving it and how that. Um, like how the how the state machines are really not um you know they're, they're they're sort of inherently flawed from my point of view and we discussed about this so the overall idea when you think about it is these state machines pretty much have like two types of states either a message was received and or a message was sent there are the initial states and the end states, but those don't really matter from this point of view, really. Um, so when you receive a message, that's fair enough. You received it, you're, you're going to process it, you advance the state machine. But when you send a message, like this concept of sending a message, especially when considering a like transport uh, abstract protocol, simply saying that you sent the message from my point of view, it doesn't really mean that much because there's no real guarantee it was even received. So you send the message, you advance the state machine, but that doesn't really do anything on its own. So the overall proposal uh, was to maybe consider, you know, at least for our, uh, our crate, but, um, to consider just the the state of the the state of the state of the state machine and like transitioning to the new state to just be done when the new message is generated and then we give the message to the user and they can send it do whatever they want with them with it 
they can retry or drop the state machine at a certain point in time. And we would basically encapsulate that message that we generated. I don't know, let's say you transition from a requested to a responded state, then the responded state would have the response. The user can always deserialize the state machine, get the uh, response from it, try to resend and whatnot. The idea behind it would be that this way, our lives are easier and we don't really make a promise that we cannot really keep because sending a message, like this, this concept of advancing the state machine because sending a message doesn't mean the state machine doesn't get in an invalid state. You can get in an invalid state where you're never gonna get anything in return um, because you have no guarantee that your message was sent. So instead of making that, you know, going that extra length of sending a message, at least at the like lower level building blocks. Um, I suggest to just have the state machines not do the, the message sending, just the message generation, and leave the sending to the user to handle however they want. Yeah. Uh, so, um, rather than transitioning to like message sent, it'll transition to something like message generated and then there's a way for them to pull that message out so they can send it exactly uh, yeah yeah, okay. yeah the, the next transition will be like basically received process the response right yeah mm -hmm. yeah so you you always know when you get a message yeah so it's, it's a good idea yeah I, I also agree i think that's uh that makes sense uh, we could uh, adopt this as we are uh, gonna be rebuilding the state machines with the state pattern. I guess we could have a bit of a, a, a bit less states than before, perhaps. Yeah, we basically just go through that extra extra step um, for no good reason, really. Maybe mm. I don't know. It's, Time goes on, and we might build some sort of like more batteries included framework, but on top of Aries VCX, then maybe we could do something like that. But that would be a different thing. Whereas, as far as I know, for the library, we're basically targeting lower level building blocks. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's good. And also, since we are talking about this, <clears throat> I remember of our last week's discussion. And I just want to uh, make sure that uh, uh, George, George is like uh, synced up like with that. George, did you have a chance to 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 uh, hear the last meeting's call? No, no, I haven't. No, that's fine. I mean, of course, it's uh, it's uh, like a one hour listening, and you need to know which are the important spot uh, spots. Uh, like, uh, it's, uh, it's quite uh it's, it takes more effort to listen to recording than actual re attending the meeting so since we have a few minutes left i would like to maybe uh, just kind of uh re revisit what we discussed last week because we were uh last week we were discussing with bogdan on a meeting about yes, the, some of the like guidelines we should be we would like to be following now for the you know the new implementation states learning from the mistakes which has which been done in the in the original implementation mm. and and those basic like the three main points plus the, the today's one so um yeah the first thing was uh the first thing was Uh, basically approach for the final state so right now uh, what we do uh, pretty much in all of the protocols I believe is when we have final state let me actually pull up some code uh, protocols and we do issuance issuer uh, and I think this is more related to the like issuer slash verifier side of the protocol usually so there's this often time like a finish state, but then the finish state itself has status, which can be success, fail. I mean, actually, this is seems like way too many. Uh, but just the entire concept of it, like that there is a status, your finish state, 
but there could be like you know different ways how you could have reached the finished state and so the finished state means that it was success or that it was also failure or you know apparently like different kinds of failure uh and it's kind of um uh, it's kind of that that was the question should we follow this one should, should we keep this pattern having one finished state with substates as an attribute or should we just have multiple uh, like uh, multiple states and uh I believe now. Uh, I believe that the the conclusion we reached, Bogdan, correct me if I'm wrong, is that we should have uh, multiple of these states instead of trying to put in the substates. Is is that do I remember correctly? I mean, so the idea was that, um, yeah, pretty much just have multiple states. Um, so we would basically generate multiple types. Like if it's a finished successful state, then that would be one type, you know, in, in the generic. Um, whereas if it's failed, then that would be a different type in the generic. And yeah. we could handle them like that. And then basically when you have a, let's say, fallible transition like that, um, you could just, you know, return a result where the okay variant is the successful state and the error variant is the failed state. Yeah, yeah, because because uh, usually this different the finished state in different substates can have different type of data associated. Like like if you are success, then you don't really have any other information. But if you are in yeah. No, it's, it, you do. So if you're if you reach finished state currently with success, then this data will be set, and it will be actual string, and here will be some structure. But if you reach the finished state through like a fail because you received a problem report, then this will be actually none currently. That's why we that why it was originally made option. But on the other hand, you will also have like a kind of extra parameter here uh, for this enum with the detail about the error, like error which occurred. So basically, we have like one state, but that itself can have like many different kind of like sub variants and combinations which are valid. And some some of the combinations wouldn't make sense at all. For example, if 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 you somehow manage to build finished state with status failed but you set the cred id and the revocation info then i don't know what it means mm -hmm. uh, and it's just hard to understand like which combinations are valid and which are not valid uh it's it's not obvious in the first sight so that was that's kind of main argument for i guess uh making it into different states because then each state could simply have required set of data which are needed for that particular like condition which occurred uh th does this make sense george what, do you have any um uh, what, what do you think yeah no I'm, I'm i'm fully on board um i i started doing that in the holder type state um i i had a finished and a failed state oh which good was it was awesome different, which it, it, it lets you get rid of these optional types um because I guess this is the main advantage of type state, right? You don't have to rely on logical uh, conditions that that you as the developer know are probably true. Uh, you mm. can just rely on type safety. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but uh, also on, on Bogdan's point of uh, returning, I guess the failed state as the error variant is is a really good idea. And that's something I hadn't put into the type state yet. And yeah, I'll adopt that. Yeah, practically, I think that there should be a way to go and treat the failed state as an error. And whatever we do with it, uh, you know, we, can, we can handle it over however we want. But... Hmm. Yeah, then, then the next uh, item we discussed last week was uh, like this part, it's it's kind of under one point here, but it's actually 
Well, it's 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 no, maybe it's missing. This is more about uh, the f success versus uh, failure, but uh, I think one missing point here is to to kind of explicitly state um, the problem with the acknowledgments right now uh, is that um, currently. Oh no, that's what we that's what we do, and we agreed to keep it. So the thing is, uh, sometimes the the Aries protocol includes uh, describes that at the end there should be some acknowledgement message sent to one of the parties, and uh, I was originally wondering on the last week's meeting if. If this acknowledgement should simply be a flag in a finished state, or the pre, or if there should be two different states, uh, like full blown, uh, you know, state pattern state, one where we are expecting the acknowledgement and the next actual finished state where we have received the acknowledgement. And uh, we came to the conclusion that since since then, since since it's kind of like Aries interaction, sending this acknowledgement, uh, it should actually be like a, a separate state. So, and that's that's how it is. So basically, we are not changing anything. Uh, let me find if where we have that kind of uh, condition. I think yeah, for issuer. So for issuer right now, we have credential sent state, and then we have finished state. Um, and um, the only thing, well, if you ignore that they structurally looks different, which is probably like a different issue, uh, but essentially these two states are equivalent the only the way you transition right now from credential sent to finish state is you receive acknowledgement and uh yeah we agreed that it should stay this way to kind of since there's a like literally a, like interaction between the two parties and we are expecting a new message we should actually have like separate state for after we receive the acknowledgement Does it make sense? To, I'm not sure if I'm, it was a bit messy explanation, I feel like. Yeah, no, no, yeah, that makes sense. Um, similar story with uh, connection as well. Right, yeah, yeah, it's also also like that there, I guess. When you have completed, right, and you have, I guess, responded, probably. No, that's invitee, inviter. You have completed and you have yeah yeah the responded. inviter sends a response uh is that right yeah and then if they get an act back then they can transition to completed yeah 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 just so uh, we put here protocols as extra in the final state but yeah essentially it's it's the same thing the only difference is the acknowledgement between them so uh what do you think? You do you agree with this as well to have these states keep these states uh, separate? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense to me. Excellent. Uh, and the last one, and I think this is something we are all already familiar with because we were discussing this in in your PR, George, is the basically that um, and I'll pull up the picture because I I am a big fan of pictures and making it making ideas visual uh those in this vr those is idea of uh the, with the current approach sometimes you call some transition on a state machine but you don't know you don't know which state it's gonna reach because it's conditional it conditional depends on the actual execution of the transition whether, for example, you succeed sending the some some uh, data to some response, or if you fail, or perhaps you can fail 
just like processing the response or I don't know accessing what or whatever. Uh, like currently, it will move you to the failed state, but if everything goes smooth, you goes to request send in this particular example. And and so the idea is a kind of uh, um, kind of a linearization of the transition. So each transition function should either move you to one specific state or it should abort and uh, you might be able to retry it according to you know custom logic on top of these state machines uh, or you could yeah just uh, after, maybe after a couple of retries you can decide to uh, move into the failed state and and possibly send a problem report. But the main idea is that one transition shouldn't leave non-deterministically to two different uh, result states. Mm. Yep. Yeah. So these were like three sort of principles we were discussing and last week, which we, which we should follow for the new in new implementations of the state machines. And I guess the, the additional one uh, as, as per Bogdan's addi addition today would be the to reduce the IO and reduce the number of the states, basically remove the states where we, the states which only serve as a marker for the fact that some message has been sent to the counterparty. And 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 is the idea to replace them with like a message generated state or something of that nature? Yeah, 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 exactly. And and actually, we uh, like as you probably know, we have some of those states, that kind of states. For example, we have uh, we have offer set. That's when you set the credential offer as an issuer, and yes, then we yeah. currently have offer send, which is the same thing just only after you have sent the offer you created. Or same mm -hmm. with, the, I think, on the prover side, which you're probably more familiar with, uh, proof verification, prover, we have here yeah, prepared. presentation prepared, right? And then we have presentation sent. It's so again, same, same situation. Yep. All right. So I'll kind of put it together maybe here uh, at the end of this meeting notes, all these like four principles. So we have it put together and we can hold on to it. Uh, anything else, guys? We are slightly over time, but I think it's fine. Uh, is there anything else? Not for me. Not for me either. All right. Uh, that was uh, productive and a nice meeting. We covered lots of stuff. It was a pleasure to have you guys. Enjoy the rest of the week. Enjoy the weekend. Thank you for coming. Cool. You too. Thank you. Have a good one, guys. Bye. -bye. Have a good one. Bye -bye. See you.